uh, hello there and welcome back to my channel my name's T -T 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 Doug and I'm back possibly with another fountain video for you today it all de depends holy crap it all depends on whether my pen b b b BBS 491 is in the mailbox today. Oh man, it's cold. Hey, that's cold. It better be there today, I tell you. Damn it. Mother pus bucket. No, God, please, no, 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 no. That blast it, that gum it. Oh, blast it. And I'm Tits McGee. I Damn it! It never gets any easier! So when it's super cold out, like it is right now, oh, even though it's only a block to my mailbox, we drive to the mailbox. It is minus 27 degrees Celsius here in Calgary. And we'll see if I got skunked again. This is even more painful than it looks. Um, I just got notified that uh, my Pen BBS 491 is out for delivery, so I'll actually see it in my mailbox today. Um, you've seen my couple of attempts over the last few days of going to the mailbox in minus 30 degree temperatures. Well, it's minus 31 right now, and I'm going back to the mailbox. But I wanted to talk about uh, things that frustrate me right now. Um, I ordered the uh, Pen BBS 491 on December 15th, and uh, it took um, a number of days to get out of China. I don't have any problem with that. It took uh, the slow boat to get across to uh, Vancouver, which was, uh, I think it took seven days to get from uh, China to Vancouver. That's, uh, that's a luxury cruise, I think. But it took eight days to get from Vancouver to Calgary. Now, I can drive that distance two and three times uh, in that amount of time. Uh, so Canada Post, come on. The other day, I opened my mailbox and I found a stack of letters wrapped in elastic and none of them were addressed to me. All of them were addressed to my neighbors. So now the mailman is putting their packs of mail in my slot and asking me to deliver to my, my friends and neighbors. Um, I also received a parcel from FedEx in my mailbox for someone else across town. Um, and it was from Sport Check. It was a t-shirt that I didn't like, so I, I delivered it actually for that person. But I'm a Canadian, it's what you do, right? Um, you do nice things for your neighbors, but I'm not going to deliver your mail for you Why don't you just deliver my mail to me on time? That would be great. Okay. Seriously, Canada Post. Come on. Come on. Come on oh. I offer a complete and utter retraction And I apologize for my rant earlier This will make it nicer I'm sorry, I'm a Canadian And finally on behalf of all Canadians I'm sorry that we're constantly apologizing for things in a passive-aggressive way, which is really a thinly-veiled criticism. That's Canadian for <laughs> Okay, here we go with the unboxing of the Pen BBS 491. I'm very excited, as you can probably tell, about this model. Um, any new model of Pen BBS. Of course, we're now waiting on the new Model 500, which I've really been excited for. And what do we have today? Lots of foam, as usual. And here's the pen. 
And let's see if we have any other goodies in here. Aha, I ordered this too. This is a Penrest in Galaxy. And no cat stickers today. Oh well, I got doubles before, so. Oh, wait a minute, spoke too soon. Here's Niango giving me a high five. So that is 485, color eight, I would assume. Mm, that's very nice. I have to get my galaxy to put on it. There we go. But we're here, not here to look at the galaxy. We're here to look at the 491. And there's the text. Color 10, which is quarterite. Quarterite. Only if we have proof of your carbonite device. And our pen BBS box. As usual, we open it up. And there's the pen. And we have our crinkly ASMR moment. And one. Close your eyes. Here is the pen. Now, I'm going to actually cut this before I go over the parts and features because it's still cold and it's condensing. So I'm going to let it warm up. Okay, enough time has passed for the pen to warm up and stop condensing all over the place. So, let's take a look at this pen for the first time. This is, as I said before, a new model of Pen BBS. And so what I'm going to do is I look at this pen over the next few days. I'm going to uh, talk about the parts and features of the pen, the things I like and don't like. I'll do some size comparisons, some dimensions, and we'll do a writing sample. And after a few days of writing with it, I'll come back and do an evaluation. But also with this pen, I want to do some actual on-screen comparisons specifically with some pen BBS models, the 308, the 456, the uh, 480, the 355, and the 322. I have examples of all those pens, and I want to take a look at those things because the section on this pen is completely different than any other pen BBS I own. So let's look at the parts and features of this beautiful pen. This is the Corderite finish. And I got this because I've never had it before, and I, I like how it's really transparent for a pen that I'm going to eyedropper, but it's also got some streaks of lovely color in there, so that, that honey kind of yellow in there and those stripes of blue and gray and so forth. We have a barrel-shaped pen, which tapers up towards the body and then back down towards the end finial. Both the, the cap and the body end we have this nice engineered conical point, which is quite lovely. And again, it's got that solid piece of acrylic that shows off this resin. Boy, I had marbles alleys when I was a kid that looked like this. This is taking me back to my public school days. So the cap tapers up, as I said. There's no clip on this pen, and the body tapers down. It's a nicely symmetrical pen, both ends. I'm going to find a stripe here. There's a stripe that sort of marks the beginning of the cap, and we're going to turn it. There's one full rotation and almost a quarter. And we have this Doug's favorite nib, Pen BBS Fine Point Mini Fude. And this is a chrome finish. 
and it says Penn BBS since 2005 with an F, and then it says China. And inside the section, you can see there's a Chinese character there as well. I'm assuming that that is the character for Penn BBS. And there is the plastic feed. Then we come to the section. The section is barrel-shaped and tapers down towards the nib, and it ends here with a, f a very dramatic flare. And this is one of the things I want to compare with other Pen BBS because I don't think I've seen a section like this. It certainly is a, uh, a tactile end to the section. Then there's those threads, which are very, very rounded, and there's only a few of them. You hardly feel that. And then there's a small step up, and then another step up to the barrel. We unscrew the section from the barrel, and again, this, like all pen BBS pens, the section material matches the body, which is a, an A plus in my book. That barrel. When we look at the section here, the, the threads here end with a little silicone ring, which allows you to eyedropper this pen. And there is the Pen BBS converter. I'm going to talk a moment about this converter. This opening here, I'm going to give you measurements on all of these things now so you can match cartridges uh, with this if, in case you're not using the converter. But I've just received yesterday these Parker shorts, and I think they're unfrozen now. Uh, but the Parker Short, I know the Parker Long, if those of you that are watching my video saw me take a Parker Long cartridge and cut the end off and get ink all over the place. Uh, but this is the Parker Short. They're not available in Canada. I had to get them through Amazon to get them uh, to me in Canada. But these Parker cartridges should fit Pen BBS sections. I'm not going to try it right now. But Pen BBS is definitely not standard international. As I understand it, Lammy's might fit as well. And I'm picking up some Lammy cartridges this Friday uh, when I'm downtown. And I'm going to do a video just on cartridges and how they fit my various pens. So if you take that converter out and eyedropper this pen, you can get it closed here. There we go. It takes a while because that ring really, you can see it sealing here. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of silicone grease on there just to double insure it. This is the ink that I've chosen for this pen. I went out and bought this with a gift certificate that I got to my stationery store. And this is Hiroshizuku Takasumi. And I'm not a big black ink fan, but this is more like a deep charcoal. So I'm going to clean out this pen, and I'm going to ink it up, uh, and then we'll do a writing sample. But first, I want to do some comparisons. That was one of the hits against it for me. The 491 does post. It makes it a long pen, but, you know, in a pinch, when you don't want your cap to roll away on you because there's no clip, you can just put it there and write with it. It is much more comfortable writing it with it this way. And this thick barrel makes it a slightly uncomfortable in my hand. But one of the cool things about the C1 is that it takes a ton of ink. I don't think I have another pen that takes more ink than this one. It's so about four milliliters of ink. So if you're a, a long-winded writer, the C1 is a terrific pen for you. Now I want to look at this pen side by side with some pen BBS models. The first one that makes sense to compare it to is the 323. This is my 323 Tootsie. And just like the 480, here's a 480, I feel is like an improvement, an evolution on the 380, uh, sorry, 308. I think what Pen BBS have done is taken the 323, 
which, if you looked at my top 10 list, this pen made it very near the very the top, and I said it was probably the writer's pen. It fits in the hand so beautifully, and you can write with it for hours. It's just ergonomically the nicest fountain pen in my hand that I've got. Uh, the drawbacks were there's no clip, and it doesn't post. Well, I think what they've done is they've taken that pen and sacrificed some of those little curves and so forth and allowed the pen to post, but it has the same, same kind of look. But they've solved the posting problem. And let's compare the sections as well. The 323 has this classic concave section with no rim on the end, whereas this is more barrel-shaped with a, a predominant flare at the very end. The other pens I want to look at are, there's the 308. 308 has this flared section. It's barrel-shaped and goes a little bit narrower at the neck here than the 47, 491 does and it flares out. So that's one comparison. So the 480 had a new type of section as well, which is this classic concave with a small lip at the end, whereas this is barrel shaped with the lip. The 456 is a different kind of section. It's similar to the 323. They're very, very similar. In fact, they might be almost identical. And finally, we look at the 355. Now, the 355 might be the closest to the new 491 of any of the pen BBS pens I have. Okay, so that's the look at the parts and features of this new fountain pen. Uh, next, I'm going to clean this out and come back um, and ink it up. But first, here are some size comparisons and dimensions. Okay, and we are back with our writing sample with the Pen BBS 491. I'm going to write with this unposted. You notice I put my little snake on there as a roll stop. So we have the Pen BBS 491. This is a fine nib and the color is cordite the ink today is Hiroshizuku Take Sume Sumi I keep saying Sume there we go Oh, that's a very, very smooth writing experience. I am not surprised at all that this mini Fude nib from Pen BBS, almost every one I've had has been excellent. Uh, this one's right up there with my, with my Galaxy 480. Let's look at the wetness. It's not the wettest nib. Uh, I would say it's probably medium, middle of the pack. I can uh, make that a little wetter if I need to, but it's writing so nicely and smoothly. And I'm thinking that the Takisume might be a little bit drier in ink as well. I'm not sure. This is the first time I've used it. Again, 
again, this writes between a fine and a medium because of that flat turned up nib. And it's very stiff. You won't get any line variation out of this. As with all the Pen BBS nibs. Reverse writing. Nope. Just not. Very scratchy. And as to fast writing. The feed is kept up beautifully. I've written with this for about three days now, maybe about three hours in total, and it's just a joy. Um, it's up there with uh, both my Galaxy 480 and my 323 Tootsie. So let's look at an evaluation for this pen. As usual, my categories are build and design, writing and feel, the look, and the value. Each one of these categories is out of four. Four is perfect, three is above average, two is a bare pass, one is a failure, and zero is a complete washout, no show. So, build and design. Well, in terms of the build, this is typically Pen BBS. Everything about it is great. The machining of the acrylic is just gorgeous. There's no flaws in that acrylic. There's no flaws in the threads. The fact that they've gone down to one and a quarter turn to get the cap off, everything about it is, is top, top marks. So I'm, I'm looking at a four for build, and, but in terms of design, I'm thinking that the design would be uh, above average. It, uh, the, I, I like the fact that they've allowed the, the pen to post. Uh, they redesigned the section, and but the, the entire pen is uh, just a bit chunkier. Instead of a perfect on design, I'm going to say it's above average. That brings the build and design up to a 3.75 for me. In terms of writing and feel, well, writing alone is just, it's just a terrific experience. The, that nib on paper is just like glass. So that's a, that's a perfect score for me. Uh, in terms of feel, it's feeling a bit chunky in my hand. And I kept thinking, well, what other Pen BBS pen feels that way to me? And that's the 355 in comparison to the 456. 456 is a bit slimmer. And I feel this pen in my hand compared to the 456, and it's just a bit chunky. I thought, well, wait a minute. I, I do like bigger pens. Like, I love my M600S from Moon Man, uh, and it's got to be the same size. Well, if you look at the measurements, these three pens, the 491 is 14.2 millimeters in girth at the widest spot. The Moon Man is 12.8 and the 355 is 13.2. So, of these three pens, the 491 is the girthiest pen in the group. So it actually ranks as one of my fattest pens that I own. And so I, I was not surprised that my, my feeling as I was writing was borne out by the actual measurements. So in terms of writing and feel, together, I'm looking at a 3.5. Now, in terms of look, um, it's a fairly, I mean, I love this finish, and there are a number of finishes available, um, but it's a fairly plain type pen. You take my accoutrement off the pen, and there's really nothing there. So it's a sort of a plain Jane, especially if you get it in a solid color. This may appeal to some people. A three in terms of looks. 
In terms of value, this pen was $19.99. Of course, there are other price points for this pen, depending on the finish. But uh, plus $2 shipping, which makes it $22 US. Um, and I think for a $20, $22 pen, this is outstanding value for how this writes and how much ink it takes. I think this is an excellent, excellent value. I'm going to give it four, a full four out of four for that. So we end up with 14.25 out of 16. And it's pretty good. I'm very pleased with this pen. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you get a notification of when a new video comes out, and that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>